What's up, photographers? This is Jason from the East Coast of the U.S. It's a hot day in the East Coast. Hot night. It's a night time. See, I got my, got my dad shirt on. It's pajama time, right? Ready to go to sleep. Um, but like I said, hot day on the East, hot night on the East Coast. And just wanted to do a brain dump. I've been away for a while doing other things, keeping busy. And um, just wanted to talk about what I've been doing lately. So, went to the West Coast. For those of you who are not in the U.S., for me, that's across the country to California. Went to L.A. and the San Diego area for about a week with my family and also to see family. So, my family from the East Coast met my family from the Midwest and we all went to the West Coast. So, we had like a little trifecta going on there, right? So, New Jersey, Ohio, California, all in one all together in California, at least for a day. While, you know, the rest of us kind of chilled together. So it was a great time. On that trip, I took the Fuji XS10, 16 millimeter 2.8. That was my daily driver for video and photography. Um, I wanted to do a, a vlog for that for my other channel, Hanging with the Logans, go check that out but i didn't do enough video um I, did, I took a lot of photos but i didn't do a lot of video for that trip at least for the la part of the trip um i'm still getting used to vlog like these type of videos makes more sense because i'm sitting down at a you know in a chair at a desk the camera's facing me i have a thought and i go with it and i shoot it so this type of video vlog works but when i'm out with family when I then when I try to create the vlog after the fact, I find that it's a lot of incontinuity going on. So I'm still trying to master that, you know, aspect of creation. Um, photos are no problem, and I can you know create slideshows like I do for this channel and kind of add it on to the video. Um, but it just seemed like I'm having so much more to look through than to have a kind of concise thought the way I'm doing with these. So. 2BD, TBD on that. So my other camera, which is my GX85, I brought the 35 to 100 f4 to 5.6, and I brought the 14 to 42 uh, 3.5 to 5.6, which is a new lens for me. It's a cheapo lens. Got it really cheap for, I think, 80 bucks. It's a kit lens, so it's not nothing fantastic, but it did the job. So for the times I didn't want to use the Fuji for the vlogging, I brought the GX85 with the 14 to 42 and the 35 to 100 to kind of have me have full range of coverage and it worked out pretty well. So I'm getting used to using that. Um, kit lenses aren't or haven't been my thing. I tend to want to go with primes and then I'll use more like kit telephoto lens, you know, because usually they tend to be a little bit better, but I don't mind it, you know? I don't mind it was good and it also it's also about your creativity and what you can do with it so no qualms there so maybe what I'll do is I will share a slideshow video of those photos so you can see what I took while I was out there you know along with the Fuji camera so you can kind of just see and, and enjoy those photos so I like looking at that stuff so hopefully you'll like looking what I bring to the table so so that's that so a recent thing I've been thinking about is upgrading the way I edit photos, my workflow. So those of you may or may not know, my workflow has always been on my laptop using Luminar 4 as my primary photo editing tool. I've been, although I, I kind of touched on Lightroom in the free version on my phone for a long time, I never paid for Lightroom um because i just didn't feel like subscription i didn't want to go down a subscription route I, I really don't like the subscription model for things i understand it because you can get updates and things like that but i try to move away from that i try to stay away from that if i can so I, you know i went the luminar route which i got the license you know back then when luminar 4 was out i paid for it i've been using it for personal and professional work no hiccups so, you know, you can get it done, 
with something other than what's the industry standard. As long as it's good, it's got to do the job at the end of the day. And Luminar 4 does the job. No complaints there. But now that I'm kind of out and about more, I'm more mobile, I'm traveling more, I'm being out with family more, you know, my family has grown, you know, I have a daughter now who, you know, she's, she's young, but she's now using devices. She's using laptops, she's using phones. You know, we have an old phone that's a spare phone. We got an old Chromebook which she uses. And so I'm just, I'm just thinking about the usage of all our stuff. So I've kind of expanded how I think about the photography, editing for workflow. And so I've gone down a road of thinking about using Lightroom and I bit the bullet. So I bit the bullet, subscribed to Lightroom. But then another thought said, you know what? I like to edit on my phone. That's excellent. I, I, I consider this, this is a Samsung Note 10. It's a little old, but still works perfectly fine. Has the S Pen, so I can use that, you know, to touch the screen and use it like a tablet. So this is my mini tablet. That's kind of how I look at it. It's like my mini tablet. And it works for me. I can edit on the go. I've always done editing on the go using my phone. But I could only edit stuff that I actually had on my phone because I wasn't subscribed to anything where I could get my photos that I would edit that I was editing in Luminar and Raw. I didn't never I never had them on my phone unless I was going to dump them in the cloud like Google Drive, which I had, and then download it and then put it on our phone natively. But the beauty of Lightroom is they have that cloud creative cloud service. So when I do edit in Lightroom, it's there. When I open up Lightroom on my phone, it has the same stuff. So that intrigued me. That intrigued me a lot. Because now I could possibly do the majority of my editing away from my laptop. So I went down the road of thinking about a tablet. So I made a purchase on Amazon about a week ago or so, about a week ago. I purchased a Lenovo Duet 3, 8 gig, 128 storage. Now that's a Chromebook. But it is a tab it's a Chromebook tablet. The Chromebook tablet can run Android apps. Then I put Lightroom on it. Worked perfectly fine. Loved it. The, the concept of the Lenovo Duet 3 was perfect. The execution, however, not so much. Everything about it was great. It had the tablet, it had, it's a tablet. It comes with the keyboard, has the back cover for the kickstand. Has, it's a Chromebook, so you have that Google ecosystem where you log in, you have everything right there, like a tab, like a, a laptop. So you have that laptop environment, but also can you can put Android apps on that device. So you, it's like having a phone and a laptop all in one. So, and I'm used to Chromebooks because I have an old Acer Chromebook, which my daughter uses primarily now because it's old doesn't have a lot of storage so I can't really use it for anything so I'm used to the Chromebooks and I thought that was the best of both worlds it's a tablet has a Chrome it's a Chromebook has Android apps you know has the comes with the keyboard all good great price good it performed well I can open up all my you know my streaming services and everything was great the problem was the audio sucked. The audio was terrible. When I compared it against my phone, when I compared it against my Lenovo powerhouse laptop that I do my, you know, editing on with Luminar and videos, the audio was terrible coming out of it. I really wanted to love it, but it was terrible. It did not do the job. Not good. So after having it, having it for about two days, I decided to send it back and so it's in a box ready to go back and I made another purchase so I said you know what I like Samsung my note 10 has been dependable I have no complaints with it I went and purchased the Samsung tab s8 256 on prime day and got a good deal on it 
and then got the keyboard as well. So that's going to be, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, because I'm pretty sure the audio is going to be better than that Lenovo Duet. I'm pretty sure it's going to be. It's a flagship tablet from Samsung. It's going to, it's going to be good. I know that for sure. And the laptop environment that Dex has, because I use Dex on my phone with my laptop, it kind of pairs with it. It kind of looks at your phone as like a, it tethers it, if you will. And then you can open up your phone on your computer and use it and then control whatever you want to control. Now, I, f I never found that useful because I'm, why would I need to do that when I'm on the laptop? It doesn't really make sense, right? I'm on the laptop. I don't really need to open it up, open up my phone on the laptop when I'm already on the laptop. I can sign into Google, Chrome, you know, Google and Android are really like kissing cousins. I can open up Google Chrome, sign into my emails, surf the internet, do everything. You know, I have alternative, like if I wasn't gonna do photo and video editing on my phone, I already have photo and video editing stuff on my laptop. So I don't need to mirror it for that. So I've never seen the benefit of it. But, but having a tablet now, it makes it different because now that I said I was used to that Chromebook, the tablet, the Samsung S8 having the DeX will make it have that tab, that um, laptop environment where you have icons and windows and things like that. And so having it natively on the device itself that would normally not look like that because it's a tablet makes it a useful feature. And so now it solved the, solved the want that I had with the Lenovo Duet by having the Tab S8 with the DeX feature. And so now I believe, I'm hoping once it comes, I'm, should, I'm gonna be getting it in a day or two. Um, I should, this should be my device for the future. Now my plan is, it's gonna give me freedom to be away from the laptop. My laptop, the issue with my laptop right now, <clears throat> excuse me, the issue with my laptop right now is that it's a desktop. It's a little old, it's a powerhouse laptop, it's got good specs, i7, 16 gigs, one terabyte hard drive, you know, NVIDIA GTX graphics card, all that stuff, so it's, it, it works, but the battery drains super fast. I probably get, if it's charged up and ready, I probably get maybe four hours maybe three hours maybe all depends on what i'm doing if you're just surfing the net you can get four hours if i'm editing video or photos significantly less and then the worst part about it is it dies abruptly off the off the cable so it's it's kind of becoming a desktop like i gotta keep it plugged in at all times or what critical times rather not all times but critical times for it to really be useful and not a problem so that kind of prompted me that kind of prompted me to get to the tablet you know because i didn't want to buy another laptop but the only thing i didn't have was a tablet so i said the tablet will kind of fit that in between especially if you get the keyboard bundle you can be productive but then you want to take the keyboard off and just do your foot you you know your editing of your photos you got lightroom bring it in got a larger device than your phone to do the editing on you know that should fill that gap and then for travel I don't have to bring the big laptop. I can bring the tablet. It's gonna be a lot, a little bit lighter, a little bit more useful, a little bit more fun to use. And yeah, so I'm excited. So I don't know if you guys out there use Lightroom or have a tablet or whatever. Give me some hints and tips and suggestions and whatever you think is cool. And um, I'm gonna leave it there. So uh, I'll be back to report on what it's like and then let you know. All right, so stay tuned for more. All right, peace guys.